another beautiful evening. And after a brief delay, we are ready to go here with preseason coverage. The first of our coverage here on TSN this year is the defending Great Cup champions host the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And we'll get a look at Bo Levi Mitchell. But of course, a first here tonight. Thank you for joining us, Dustin Nielsen and Glenn Suter. And the Dickinson brothers are going to go head to head. For the first time in over a 100 year history of the Canadian Football League, two brothers will face each other as head coaches. Dave Dickinson, your Great Cup champion head coach from a year ago, and his younger brother, se separated by a year and a half, Craig Dickinson on the other sideline, 47th head coach for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in their history, and in fact was at his brother Dave's house when he was offered the contract from Saskatchewan, took it immediately, so the two will face each other this year. I didn't think breakfast went this morning between the two. <laughs> What's that like? And, and who are mom and dad cheering for, I think, is going to be the question as the season goes on. I think it's it's got a, each of them has to wear one shirt. That's probably what we're looking at as uh, Josh Huff gets ready. Back there with Keenan LaFrance standing around the 10 yard line to return the opening kick of the preseason here for the Riders. And uh, you know, the smoke is gone. And you'll see the hold here. It has, the wind has picked up here, which we needed to clear the smoke out. And it's good enough now to go and a kick that's gonna fall into the arms here of Huff. At about the 16, he'll take it up the middle, back to the 30. A pretty nice return here for Josh Huff as he gets up to the 35, and that is where Bo Levi Mitchell will start here for the Stampeders. And of course, the last time we saw him, Glenn, he was tossing touchdowns in the Great Cup Championship against the Ottawa Red Blacks. Another win for Calgary, another championship for Bo Levi Mitchell, the game's MVP, the league's. MOP, free agent in the offseason, but elected to stay here in Calgary. And boy, is Dave Dickinson and this organization happy that he did. Good news for the Stampeders to keep their most important piece here. And he will start at the 35, three targets to his right. And he's going to take a shot right down the field. And that one complete inside the 35 as he wasted no time going to Reggie Bagleton. And the Stamp Peters with an excellent start picking up where they left off, I guess you could say. Well, different philosophies for both head coaches here. Dave Dickinson told me yesterday that he's going to play Bo for probably 8 to 12 plays. And if those are a good 8, then he'll come out immediately. If he thinks he needs to see it a little bit more, he'll stay in for a couple more reps. But picks up where he left off last year. Led the league in deep balls. Bagleton. Last year's seven games did have one touchdown, a 29-yard catch there. Now Mitchell strikes again, and it's Bengleton again. And this time he'll take it down to about the 10. So back-to-back -back catches here for Bengleton. That one, a 26-yard pickup. Well, he sees the field so well. I mean, that's why Bo Levi Mitchell has put together the win-loss record that he has. He just simply wins football games, wins championships, and Two now, two, two great cup rings. He looks like he's just picked up right where he left off. Two plays, and just like that, the Stampeders here are knocking on the door early against this Riders defense. This time they'll hand it off on a little bit of a swing, and up and over, and eventually taken down there was Marquis Ambles. Play with the starting unit. There's the 5,000 plus yards for Bo Levi Mitchell in the regular season last year. 35 touchdowns. I mentioned also that he led the league by all quarterbacks in that deep ball, the 30 plus throw. He was over 40 in that department. So Bo Levi Mitchell loves to sling it deep. 35 touchdowns, his career high there as well. So an excellent season for Bo Levi. And sits here in the shotgun. Three targets to his right here on the wide side of the field. He's going to look that way to the end zone. And that one is up and over the outstretched arms of Richard Sedani. It looked like the receiver just bent in a little bit there. And, and Mitchell wanted him to stay straight down the, down the seam. See there in the bunch formation here. It's going to be the deep route. I'm not sure if it was Breskison or, yeah, I think it was Breskison at the back of the end zone. Just bent in a little bit at the end of the top of that route. Mitchell missed him, but maybe one more series for Bo. Eddie Paredes out here to give Calgary the lead. No problem there. So the Stampeders march the field early, have a 3 0 lead in the first over the Riders.
Riders trailing 3 nothing and watching on on the sidelines. Zach Kolaros, we won't see him tonight. Yeah, different philosophy for Craig Dickinson. Dave Dickinson said he wanted to play Bo at least a series, maybe two, but for Craig Dickinson, it's Zach Kolaros, and he's going to not dress for this one. We'll get his reps in the next game. Undisputed starter for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I know a lot of their fan base would like to have seen more offense from the Riders last year, who, remember, won 12 games. Zach Kolaros won 10 of his starts. Deep kick, it's caught at the goal line, and it'll be brought back up to the 20. And it's taken down there. On the return, James Butler, who also battling for a running back spot, battling for a quarterback position right now, Cody Fajardo. Yeah, I think this is going to be interesting to watch tonight. Cody Fajardo and David Watford are the two front runners for that backup spot behind Zach. And if you think about Zach's history, although he's in great shape this year, Dickinson told us, and looked real good in training camp, that they've got to figure out who's going to be number two, and that's going to be evaluated here tonight. Fajardo starts on his own 22. He's got Butler in next to him. Takes the handoff, rolls to his right, connects on the pass up to about the 25. But Fajardo completion there on his first pass attempt of the football game. Yeah, it looked pretty good. You always want to get that first one under your belt. Just nice little easy throw off play action here. Third receiver inside is going to just take a little jab step and turn out. Ball right on the target. That doesn't have to be a big deep throw or anything like that, like Bo Levi Mitchell just showed us. For a young quarterback, get yourself in a rhythm. Nice completion out of the gate for Fajardo. Brock McCoy on the Tennessee Tech side in February with his first catch of the preseason. Another completion. This one up to about the 32. Wrapped up there quickly is Corey Watson with his first catch as a rider. So we should see a good full quarter of Cody Fajardo. And Craig Dickinson telling us that next up will be David Watford. There he is, number six, standing beside Zach Kolarison. Watford, of course, played last year. Got a chance to get some reps in live game action. Showed that he's a tremendous athlete. Can he run the passing game and execute it properly? I think is the big question for number six for the Riders. But for Jarder with a couple of completions out of the gate here. Look at Watford there as there's a Calgary Stampeder down on the field getting looked at right now. We'll try to get an update when we come back as the Riders trail the Stamps 3-0. Well, earlier in the day, you could barely see the field from the broadcast booth, but things have cleared up nicely. And with maybe his first smoke update ever, <laughs> let's send it down to Jermaine Franklin. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dustin. As you mentioned earlier in the day, throughout most of the day, the city of Calgary was absolutely blanketed in smoke. It's pretty incredible when you think about the air quality. It was poor. It was above 10, which meant that it was very high risk, which put this preseason game in jeopardy. Now, state, knowing how quickly the weather can change here in the prairies, the Stamps, along with the league, stayed in close contact with Environment Canada, and sure enough, the wind picked up, took most of the smoke with it, and if you see a picture now, just a couple hours before game time, it completely cleared up, and of course, it made it safe enough for these guys to play the game. Now, it should be mentioned that the decision wasn't made by the league alone. The CFLPA was involved. Rob Maber is a player rep with the Stampeders. He was in contact with not only the Stamps, but the league, as well as Environment Canada. And that's why we have a ball game tonight. Thank you very much. It was nice how everybody came together quickly. We were listening to one of the conference calls. They had to all come together and agree on something very quickly. But we've got a game on our hands here and a big opportunity for a lot of guys like Fajardo who need to prove something in this game plan. Yeah, all about evaluation. And yeah, that you know, the, the smoke alert and the quality of the air important for the safety of the players. That's why the Players Association got involved, but also the safety of the fans in the stands. So, it's all clear and we're good to go. They were tailgating two hours before the game, so they're good to go. Fajardo with a completion on the far side of the field. And that one's going to be close to a first down. And a catch. Looked like he got it into the hands of Brock McCoyne. And you may have noticed in that last shot, two female officials, one over on the sideline there. That ball popped out, but did he have possession long enough? The ruling on the field is a catch, fumble out of bounds, first down. Brandon Smith in coverage. Made the play defensively, but they're going to rule it a catch, and it is enough 
for the first down. More on our female officials here tonight as the show goes on, but making a little history. And these guys try to make history for themselves because they've got to try to make a football team in the next two games. See the challenge flag thrown here. We got one good look at it. You like this challenge? Well, new Calgary's rule. challenging the ruling on the play. The play will be reviewed. New rule this year or, or an adjustment to the old rule when it comes to coaches challenges is they get a second one now. You remember last year, just one challenge and whether they won or lost, that was it for coaches. This year, they get a second challenge. If they win the first, they'll get the second. So Dave Dickinson wants another look at that out route and whether or not possession was gained before the ball came out of there. That's the 12 year veteran Brandon Smith punching it free. Boy, Dave Dickinson has a lot of work to do to rebuild this Calgary defense. They were hit hard this offseason and basically gutted. Major all-stars leaving to the NFL or in free agency. Considering and considering the dominance that we've seen from the Stampeders here for, uh, let's just say, the last five years going to four Grey Cups and winning two of them, it's not very often you see a, a league champion have to change so much on the defensive side of the ball, is it? No, it, it isn't. It, it's, you see it more with a, a real poor team that has got to make changes, drastic changes, not necessarily a championship team, although you do get cherry-picked. When you have all-stars and you have guys that make plays like their Calgary defenders, Alex Singleton, Ja'Gara Davis, Jameer Thurman, all gone. Micah Johnson now is Saskatchewan Rough Rider. So they've got some rebuilding to do. Brandon Smith is the the senior in that group. He's 12-year veteran, and he's going to have to bring them together. But my conversation with Dave yesterday was interesting. He said, I don't think in my time in Calgary, and that's over 10 years now, I've ever seen this much turnover in personnel on one side of the ball. Considering the success that they have had, I think you'd have to have a lot of faith in the organization to find some replacements as we have a ruling here on the field. Dave doesn't like it. <laughs> doesn't look like it, does it? <laughs> After review, the ruling on the field stands. The ball will be placed at the 42 and a half yard line. First down. You know, you asked if I, if I liked the challenge, yeah. and, and I did because it was right at the first down marker, and he's getting the ball back for a second offensive series if Correction. he wins the challenge. It'll be third down, half a yard short. So they're right at the marker. They're half a yard to go. Uh, Saskatchewan will stay on the field and go on this third down. Richardo is very familiar with third down, being a third down quarterback. Yeah, he had five touchdowns last year as well, diving ahead. It's Craig takes a look at this. It was funny you saw Dave chatting with the official and one of the things Craig said yesterday was if he's going to do anything unlike Dave, he's going to try to stay off of the officials. Take a little bit of a shot of his brother. I thought, that was a, I thought that was a good answer to that question. All right, so Fajardo will come off the field here. And we will get a kick on third oh, and one. And John Ryan will come out to kick this ball away for the first time as a rider. Now I don't like the challenge by Dave Dickinson. That changed. Ryan stands just inside his 30. The fly is up there and will come down at the 22. Flag on the play. A pretty good battle, but eventually taken down. At around the 25 as Bo Levi Mitchell gets set to come out one more time. Bo Levi Mitchell, two of three for 65 yards on the opening drive for the Stampeders. Had to settle for a field goal, and Suits are going to bring him back out here again. Yeah, another series probably be it here, and Dave's still talking about the challenge. But his <laughs> philosophy with playing Bo for a couple of series in the first game is, is really quite simple. And there's not a right way or a wrong way. Different coaches, different strategies. But you see Zach not dressed, so Craig had a very different, you know, thought on it. But he thinks that for your home game in the preseason, you should play your starters because the fans are buying tickets. Coming out, they should see the starting guys. Here is Bo Levi Mitchell once again. A completion, another big one too, across midfield. 
as he gets it in the hands of Marquise Hambles. But I'm not sure, as you mentioned earlier, Dustin, that, that Dave Dickinson needs to see much more from Bo Levi Mitchell. And, and now you, you, you start after this series basically thinking the risk and reward factor comes into play. And that's why Craig Dickinson decided not to dress Zach Kalaros for two reasons. One, the starting old line isn't together in Saskatchewan. For two, he's not going to put him in harm's way right now. He'll do that in the second game. 19 yard pickup there to Ambles. This time they'll hand it off. And a pickup of a couple of yards there for Terry Williams. Bo Levi now up to over 80 yards already on three completions. A couple of departures for this championship team on offense. Devaris Daniels, one of the receivers that has moved on, and a couple of departures on offense, but their receiving course still looks good, and Bo is still slinging. They show with Williams immediately to his left. Looks over the middle, and we're trying to find Rodgers, and a little too high at the 40. Different number. Calgary fans and Saskatchewan fans, just a little stumble out of the gate. That's a little training camp legs from one of the top receivers in the game. And when he is fully healthy, boy, is he tough to cover in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Three touchdowns for Eric Rogers in the Western Final last year. Contributed in the Grey Cup in a big way also, but just one of the top guys in the game. He's wearing Micah Johnson's old number this year. I guess when it opens up, first come, first serve, or how does that, that's a seniority thing. Well, veterans, veterans get what they want. Yeah, that's how it works. Here's the West Final and the show that Bo Levi Mitchell and Eric Rogers put on in that game against Winnipeg. That was a close game right down to the wire, too, with bomber season, but it ended. Calgary going to the Great Cup. 15 had three. Yeah, we're done. I was going to say, why change your number? 15 there. There's a 15 for the Riders actually down on the field right now. Mike Adam, he's getting looked at here on one knee, and now he'll get up and walk off under his own power. Preseason for, for both coaching staffs, evaluation, number one priority. Way down the list is the final score in the priority department, but number two on the list is don't lose anybody, especially your veteran starters. Like Mike Edom will be okay. He's one of the few that the Riders brought with them as well. As the Stan Peters will get set to kick this away. Neighbor from just inside his own 50, a low kick. Flies out of bounds. Just over eight minutes remaining in the opening quarter. It's the Calgary Stampeders leading the Riders 3 0. Gotta love Saskatchewan Rough Rider fans. Your radio guy, yes. Edmonton, and the morning show, Gerardo out of the backfield here. But so you know that I work on the Green Zone, which is a radio station, CJMB Radio in Regina, CQM in Saskatoon. And our, our host, Jamie Nye, said and had a poll question saying, coming up this weekend, what's more important to the sports fan in Saskatchewan? The NHL playoffs, the finals, the NBA finals, or the Saskatchewan preseason game against Calgary? Guess which one? Oh, I think I know. 48% <laughs> of those surveyed said the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were the most important part of the weekend. And I bet the 48% who voted are disappointed that everybody else didn't vote as well. Uh, this one pops loose just inside the 30 as he was looking for Kyran Moore, who people are pretty excited oh, about yeah. here in Ryderville. Yeah, well, first of all, you, you saw him last year and, and how he produced quickly when he got inserted into the lineup. Ten games for Kyran Moore and had a couple of punt return touchdowns, big player receiver, can get behind coverage, but apparently has had an outstanding training camp, catching everything. That one, he just gets rocked and the ball comes out, but he's had a great camp. Ryan stands inside his own five-yard line to kick this one away. Josh Huff waits for it. Inside is 45. Ryan's kick's going to come down around midfield. Bounces at the 47 and rolls out of bounds. So excellent field position here for the Calgary Stampeders, who will be led this time by Nick Arbuckle. That's it, a couple series for Bo Levi Mitchell, he went. 
Looked sharp in his two series. Out of the gate with a deep ball. Ended up three of five for 84 yards. 65-yard throw to Bagleton in the first drive. And that's all Dave Dickinson needed to see from his undisputed starter at quarterback. So we'll see Nick Arkbuckle from there. Montel goes up. Arbuckle with four targets to the wide side of the field. Looks down the middle of the field, and that one will be complete inside the 10. And stumbling ahead, Preskison puts him in mighty fine position right here. And a nice throw from Arbuckle. He's got the edge at that number two spot. The quarterback rotation for Calgary, and that's from play last year. And, and Dave Dickinson told me in a phone call this morning that He's liked his training camp. Lifts the ball nicely to Juwan Breskison over coverage. Breskison, three touchdowns last season for the Stampeders. Arbuckle now with Terry Williams in behind him. He'll toss it out to Williams, waiting for something to open up, but he doesn't shut down at about the five-yard line. Roberts in on the tackle. Think of the big play that Terry Williams had in the Great Cup against Ottawa in November. The return game. Injured in the West Final was Romar Morris for Calgary. Looks like he'll be back sooner than they expected. Maybe even Labor Day. They're optimistic that they can get Morris back by then. Pleasant surprise returning from an Achilles. Now here's our buckle. Looks to his left, throws to his left. And a flag does come out. Steven Roberts, the guilty party there, trying to reach around the receiver. Craig Dickinson left the entire, basically the entire starting secondary back home for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The guys Pass like Preston Butler. Saskatchewan, number 26. Ball will be placed at the one yard line. First down. Preston Butler, Ed Ganey, Nick Marshall, Luchez Purifoy, all back in Saskatchewan. Those are the starting group basically in the secondary. And going to get a look at some of the young guys and that's what you put them under the lights for it right hand twisted the receiver for Calgary Arbuckle hands it up this time right up the middle looked like he might have got there and then was pushed back Ante Milanovic Litre he wants it no signal there as far as crossing that goal line breaking the plane take another look down the line here but Yeah, ball was kind of just back in his torso there, wasn't it? Yeah, the ball has to cross the plate, not necessarily the player. You could be as a player inside the end zone with the ball on the outside and not, it's not a touchdown. Turn him away. Arbuckle, will he keep it this time? Go back to return again. And a couple of flags at the time of the snap. Good job here by the Riders defense. Really was. He, Mac Henry in the middle of that defense. The guy returning to the defensive line. Is Gerald Rivers involved there? Was that? Looks like there are two or three Saskatchewan Rough Rider feet over that into that neutral. Offside, ball. Saskatchewan, number 26. First down. That was Roberts again who took the penalty earlier here on this possession. So Calgary will get a fresh set of downs and try to punch this thing in. They lead 3-0. Arbuckle this time on the quarterback keeper, and he's in. Touchdown, Sam Peters. And a nice drive here for Nick Arbuckle. Now what's happening? Play comes flying out of a pile. Looks like things got nasty there for a second. Yeah, that can happen. <laughs> Preseason, right? That can Fight happen down there in the, in the trenches. And Arbuckle had five touchdowns last year for the Stampeders. Familiar with that spot. The extra point is going to come from Oscar Hugo Silva, who was selected 18th among the players in the Mexico draft. Mm -hmm. So we'll get our first taste of the global factor here on TSN. Yep. 
Very cool opportunity Unnecessary for roughness, Saskatchewan, number 74. 15 yards will be applied on the kickoff. Well, part of the CFL 2.0 and, and to, you know, there are, there are over 40 professional football leagues in the world, and the top two are in North America, but that doesn't mean that you can't find some great talent elsewhere, and there's going to be an extra spot. That one wide left. Tough start for Silva. There's a look at Emily Clark, one of two female officials making her CFL debut. She's side judge here. Yeah, side judge, physical education teacher, and athletic director out of Alberta here, and, and that's there's about 40 kilometers out of Calgary, but she's been officiating in Canada West for 17 seasons, and Darren Hackwood, the head of officials for the CFL, giving a couple of opportunities. There's Emily Clark, 95, and Georgina Paul, also in this game. I, I, we were chatting about it on the way here. Georgina Paul has her PhD in atmospheric science, which was perfect for us today, I, I thought, with the way that the atmosphere here in Calgary was. So if they needed any expertise, they definitely could have gone to Georgina. And she has been officiating for seven years, so opportunities for two women to officiate in the CFL, and who knows, maybe get a job down in the near future. It's a great opportunity, great idea by Darren in the league. Well, I was you're, reading you're, earlier how they have like a prospect list of about 30 officials yeah. that they keep tabs on, which is probably, I mean, you got to develop officials as important as developing players to come play in your league, right? So, and, and they've earned the opportunity here tonight. This wasn't, yeah. this isn't a gimmick or anything like that. This was earned the opportunity to come out and officiate a preseason game in the CFL. Delay a game, Calgary, number 71. 10 yard penalty, we'll re kick off. Good pitcher before the game started of the crew out here tonight working our preseason contest between the Stampeders and the Riders. It will be Silva to kick it away as well. Miss that extra point. Look real confident, don't they? I love it. They just like. Now it hasn't gotten heated on the sideline just yet. <laughs> this ball bounces away there from James Butler. And he'll have to take a knee in the end zone. And that'll bump Calgary up to a 10 0 cushion. You know, in a lot of in a lot of sports today, whether it's football or anything else, I mean I keep hearing things well. about yeah. how difficult it is to find officials. And you know if we get a lot of women involved as well. I mean, yeah, if you're if you're a young woman yeah. athlete right now and you're thinking about a, a career, I mean, why not you? Exactly. There's no reason. Yeah, continue yeah. to work hard at it. Learn your craft. Get some experience in the amateur levels all the way up from minor football all the way through college football and let's maybe get a chance at the pro level, make some money at it doing, doing it as well. Cody Fajardo here, four and six for 27 yards. And he was going to hand that ball off, but a flag on the play. So we'll reset the procedure. Saskatchewan, number 64. Five yard penalty. It'll remain first down. Back the riders up here, five yards. What are your thoughts on Fajardo so far? Well, I, li I like the first series. Uh, you know, I thought he came out confidently, completed a couple throws early, went out of play action. Look, poised, got some time to complete those throws. And the one play on the sideline that Craig Dickinson decided to kick on third one. So, moved pretty well so far. So he swings it out to James Butler. Butler makes a couple of Stampeders miss. It's 10 yards on the play, including the five back they lost on the penalty. And it'll be second and five ish situation here. Nice effort there from Butler, who's battling for a job on this Riders team. Yeah, this is an interesting sort of battle as well, as you mentioned, Dustin, because they're, they're looking for a starting tailback. No more Cameron Marshall in Saskatchewan. And Season next week, a little bit of different styles from the back, similar size guys. Down, eight group you know, ready. Keenan LaFrance will be in that conversation as well. But as far as impact from the import position at running back, they're going to look at both of them tonight, Butler and Morrill. Butler to 
school in Iowa, was with the Raiders in 2018, had an opportunity there. But you're, you're right, he's 5'9", 210, and Jamal Morrow, who we'll see later, 5'8", 205. And then you mentioned Keenan LaFrance, who will be in the mix as well. And he had a couple touchdowns for the Riders a few years ago, a couple touchdowns for Winnipeg as well here over the last couple of years. So well, good competition for sure. Yeah, Morrill Mor Mor played at Washington State. So, you know, he played in a passing game, good out of the backfield, real good hands in the passing game. I asked Craig Dickinson about their blocking abilities, and he said they both like it. They both can protect the quarterback. So it'll be a fun competition to watch in the two preseason games between Morrill and Butler. And Keenan LaFrance, of course, is a veteran. So he will contribute from that position. Dakota Shepley was the injured rider who just walked off, and I know people will be pretty excited about Dakota Shepley, who went to school at UBC and an opportunity with the Jets. Highly touted player coming out of university here in Canada. Pajardo looks to his left, flings one in there, and that'll be complete. It'll be close to a first down as he finds KD Cannon, who we've heard really good things about so far. Yeah, Craig Dickinson really likes KD Cannon's athleticism. He said he can climb the ladder and go get a ball that's thrown off the high. That's a confidence throw. That's Trey Roberson over there on the short side corner. That's a veteran corner starting defense for Calgary, one of the few starters back, and they threw right at the teeth of it. And on that previous play, Butler had actually broken tackle with Roberson as well. Now, Pichardo on the run, and he completes the pass on the far side as he goes back to McCoy, who's got three catches now here in the first quarter. So a nice start here for Brock McCoy out of Tennessee Tech. I have been, you know, impressed with Cody Fajardo in this in this game so far. I mean, again, he hasn't really pushed the ball deep. He's not trying to get big chunks, but this is the rider offense. It's it's an offense that the same coordinator coming back from last year. And, you know, this is a, an offense that goes sideline to sideline quite often. This time they'll hand it off and trying to jump ahead there was James Butler. He's going to be mighty close to the first down. Maybe a yard short. Got enough. It'll be a first down here for the Riders. Stephen McAdoo is that coordinator I mentioned, and, and he is back with the team. So while they'll always make adjustments and the offense and defenses will evolve from year to year, it's similar philosophy. Now, remember, this was a rider offense and the second in the league in rushing behind Winnipeg. Pajardo makes the handoff. He'll keep it on the read. He's going to push ahead. Excellent effort there from Cody Pajardo. As he didn't have a ton of room there, but managed to make some room for himself. Pick up a five. He was probably the best quarterback in the, in the mock game in the, in the inner squad game that they played. And I, I went back and looked at University of Nevada. He threw for over 13,000 yards. I mean, he put the ball off at college. Took a big pop at the end there from Roberson. Pajardo. The time rolling down here in the corner. Gonna keep it right up the middle. He's got the first down and some more for Fajardo as he'll step out of bounds at the 37. And Cody Fajardo starting to feel it a little bit here, Glenn. Yeah, getting that rhythm, couple first downs, and as the quarter comes to the end, that'll be really what stops this momentum if it does, but gets himself in manageable situations. Gets the first down here, but he's been in second and medium, second and short. Best drive of the game here for the Riders. The final play of the opening quarter as Kalaros looks on here. At maybe it's possible backup, Cody Fajardo. Low snap, picks it up, has some time. Now he's going to be forced up the middle again. He's going to keep it again, and this time he'll be tracked down from behind by Ivan McLennan. Riders offense. Moving the ball for the first time today, and they need to on a beautiful night in Calgary. They trail the defending Great Cup champ, Stan Peters, 10-0. Levi Mitchell first two series the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have left a lot of their starters back home so keep that in mind but I thought Cody Fajardo and Bo Levi Mitchell both look pretty good Cody trying to get that number two job I want to welcome you the rookie to the crew Dustin to 
our team here at TSN calls some games this year. I know you're doing about eight games yeah, this I'm year. Yeah, I'm getting a few games. I'm yeah. excited for the opportunity. I've been doing university games for quite a while. But I might have been the only guy today when it was smoky out. I was like, it's okay if we delay the game because I was, <laughs> was kind of nervous. But uh, no. it cleared out. So Great start. Now, are you warming up your vocal cords <laughs> is my question because Chris Cuthbert set the bar when it comes to rookies joining TSN's crew singing in a bar in Halifax with a couple of hundred people. He got up on stage. So... That's the act you got to follow tonight sometime. Are we talking karaoke bar or just a regular bar? No, he got up and sang his fight song. So right, what do you well, got for us? Whatever Chris Cuthbert does. <laughs> I went to Lethbridge College, and I don't think we had a fight song, so I'll just make something up. How's that sound? Well, I can help you with friends in little places. <laughs> hey, oh, that's not Brooks a bad idea. <laughs> that's what I was leaning towards. No, welcome to the crew, and uh, it's going to be a great season. I know you're going to do some games throughout the regular season as well. Fajardo remains in here. We talked about if he'll get a quarter or not, but when he's got a drive going like this, like, you can't take him out at this point, can you? No, I, yeah, you let him finish the drive. He's in a pretty good groove and and feeling it, so you want him to stay in that rhythm, maybe cap it off, and then like we see David Watford after that. This is Brock McCoy, who actually has had a pretty good game so far for the Riders, coming up lame there after throwing that block to open some things up for Fajardo. Holding his wrist. Looked like he, yeah, he injured himself going down. Rule in the league is that you can't come back and crack back walk back towards your line of scrimmage. I don't see a flag. Looked like he was pretty close to that. It'll be frustrating for a guy like McCoy who comes into the league here out of Tennessee Tech. Uh, just signed in February. Has an opportunity here tonight. Three catches in the first quarter. And now all of a sudden you're sitting here having to deal with this. Well, it's, you know, it's so many good football players just get hurt at the wrong time and their opportunity disappears. You hope it's not that that's not the case for Brock McCoy, who, who who is a guy who's one of those great overall athletes. I mean, back you mentioned at Texas Tech where he played his college ball. He, he played a few games at quarterback back in college. Good overall athlete good first quarter in this first preseason game and so I look, look there at Craig Dickinson on the the sideline and we were had a chance to chat with him yesterday and one of the things he was asked when he was doing a media scrum before we chatted with him was about going from the special teams coordinator yeah. to the head coaching position and I thought he actually had a pretty good answer talking about how with special teams coordinator you're pretty much dealing with everybody anyway as opposed to being you know an OC or a DC and I think that's going to help him in the transition. He seemed to feel more comfortable about it. Well, he, he's the only positional coach, the special teams coach, is the only positional coach that addresses the entire team. The head coach does and the special teams coordinator. And he reminded, I thought it was a great point, he reminded us that there have been some legendary great coaches that started their coaching career as special teams guys. Wally Buono and Don Matthews. Two are decent the top, guys, hey? Are on the top of that list. It worked out for them. Probably work out for anybody. Fajardo, six of eight, 50 yards, 30 yards on the ground as well. Throwing here, and that will be complete inside the 15, back into the arms of KD Cannon. Well, that's, even though these are intermediate to short routes, it still takes confidence for Cody Fajardo to see Cannon on that slant and throw it into coverage. Fajardo will keep it here as they move quickly to pick up the short yardage first down, but there is a flag back in the end zone. Who said he, he has some experience now, so it's not like he's a raw rookie, but even when you're throwing that inside cut, that inside slant route to Katie Cannon in this case, play action, eyes up, He's got to deliver it. If that ball is off a little bit inside or a little bit behind Cannon, it's Face going mask. the other way. Calgary, number 49. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And, and Cody Fajardo has made three or four throws like that in this game already. He's going to have an opportunity here as this ball on the face mask against the Stampeders will be moved down to the six-yard line. So... First and goal from the 6-4 Fajardo trying to lead a touchdown scoring drive. And he's got James Butler in behind him. He'll give it to Butler. Butler, a couple of cuts. Gets down inside the three. Nowhere else to go. Craig Dickinson saying Butler is, is one of those workhorse type of backs. One of the guys you can... You can hand the ball to a ton, and he'll just get better as the game goes on. Most good running backs are like that. And he said Jamal Moro, more of a 
a scat back, a versatile back who can catch it out of the backfield well. Pajardo here from the two, throwing this time. Has a man that's caught just short of the end zone as Kyron Moore gets held up just outside the goal line. Again, a, a throw that has to be dead on accurate. You can see from Fajardo's point of view, he's got a little window to get it out there. And Moore's knee touches before the ball crosses. Does he even maintain possession or did that ball bounce? A little bit of movement there. Third and goal from the one for the Riders. Fajardo, will he keep it? Yes, he will. Will he get there? Does not look like it. Oh. Sam Peters defense standing him up at the line. Nate Hawley with the celebration. Fajardo comes up short after an excellent drive for the Riders. Phil, it's going to be a hit from the outside to the left of your screen from Royce Mechie, the safety on the play. He gets first contact. I think you're right, Dustin. There was. Nate Hawley from the inside out, safety from the outside in. I mentioned some of the departures for Calgary on defense. Adam Berger's another one that they had penciled in as the starting safety this year, and he retired. So they're looking for a guy to step up at the safety position. Stan Peters get the ball back, but they are backed up here. Our buckle. Three receivers to his right. Makes the handoff. Keeps it. That ball deflected, but still caught. Excellent effort there from Josh Huff, who was in the AAF earlier this year. And, and wasn't there long. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> Little play action. And that was tipped across the middle, but nice concentration by Josh Huff. Former third round pick for the Eagles. Comes up with a nice catch after the tip. Big pick up there, 26 for Arbuckle with a little bit of help. Now far side, that's complete. Back to Huff, puts on the brakes. And the Riders close on him quickly. And he'll be about three or four yards short here of a first down. Josh Huff played at Oregon. It's college ball, so again, a, a team that likes to, to throw the football. Had over 2,000 yards in his college career before being drafted in the NFL, and now has a chance to maybe fill a hole left by Chris Matthews in the starting lineup for Calgary. Was around the NFL from 2014 to 2018 and signed with Calgary earlier this month. Good first impression here. Harbaugh's an empty backfield. That pass a little high, but it's hauled in. Nice job there getting his hands on that one for Ladarius Galloway. We often in preseason see coaches decide to go for it on third down just to get more reps for their quarterbacks. And I was wondering if Dave Dickinson was thinking that here, although he's on his own 35 yard line, it makes it a little more tough to do it. In your own end. Neighbor standing on his 21. That's the one that's fly. Up down at the 26. Again, who's getting a pretty good workload tonight. He'll take it back up to the 35 as the Stampeders defense holds and continue to lead 10-0. One of the departures for the Calgary Stampeders this past offseason was defensive coordinator Devon Claybrooks and Brent Monson takes over. Now, Calgary fans will be familiar with Monson. He's been with the team for 10 years and part of one of the architects of this defense. But look at all the losses, especially on the defensive side of the ball with Alex Singleton, Michael John, uh, Micah Johnson, who is now a Saskatchewan Rough Rider, Ja'Gara Davis, Jameer Thurman, They're looking for Corey Greenwood to replace Alex Singleton in the middle of the defense at middle linebacker. Huge shoes to fill. No doubt about that is Watford into the game now. And that ball is dropped. He manages to regain control of it, but it'll be a loss of about six. Well, 
exact opposite of how Cody Fajardo started his reps. His first throw was complete. That goes a little bit of a low snap, but Watford took his eyes off the ball and went between his hands. And now his, let's see if his, his confidence is shaken a little bit here. Braden Tram at center, who played his university football right here, actually, at McMahon with the Calgary Dinos. Watford, three receivers to his right. Dumps it off underneath, and that will be complete to Butler again. And Butler takes it up to the 40. And he is wrapped up there by a couple of Stampeders. I think David Watford has got to show Craig Dickinson here tonight or in the next preseason game as well that he can run the passing game, that he can execute the passing game. The guy's a tremendous athlete. When he starts running with the football, he's like a tailback in the open field. But we've seen that, and so is Craig Dickinson. to kick this away his own 30 when he lets it fly that'll be taken at the 22 and a little bit of room to run he brought all the way back up outside the 40 as Griff Whalen on the return there for the Stampeders Calgary with Arbuckle back out here again looking to add to what's already a 10-0 lead Nick Arbuckle, four or five for 72 yards, and dove in for a touchdown for more on the backup quarterback. Let's send it down to Jermaine. Thanks, Dustin. You know, Dave Dickinson told me that he's never worried about Nick Arbuckle's work ethic. Actually, Arbuckle spends more time in the gym than Dave Dickinson said he ever thought of as a player. And the reason why Arbuckle spent so much time in the gym is he is obsessed with getting better and improving. And the one thing the gym provides is tangible results. He marks down everything he does. He knows when he's getting better. He has the exact same attitude when it comes to playing the quarterback position. And perhaps the gym helped him get that first completion out of his own zone there. It looks like Jermaine knows a thing or two about the gym as well. Beefing up in the offseason. Excellent cut there and a nice little spin there from James Butler, who's been pretty impressive here so far for the Riders. Garbuckle is certainly enhancing his his chance to stay that number two spot behind Bo Levi Mitchell yeah, with the way he's played so far. But that was a nice run. Yeah. Penalty against the Stan Peters kept possession here for Watford in the right lane. Goes once again back to James Butler. And Butler this time ran out of room there as he sprung out of the backfield. Holly closed in on him. Well in case you're confused there we the, the riders obviously punted the football it was too many men penalty and this is something that the coaches are evaluating when they're when they're watching players that to make sure there's so many on the sideline especially for the home team but there's so many on the sideline that you got to know and be focused what special teams you're on make sure you're out there and know your assignment or get you cut quickly away this will come down at the five to Galloway escapes a couple of tackles but good downfield coverage from the riders eventually wraps him up and there's a man living a dream in John Ryan absolutely and uh, you know former Seattle Seahawk over 10 years in the National Football League Green Bay as well Take a look at his bio. Started at the University of Regina Rams was drafted by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers back in 04 had a tremendous NFL career, outstanding athlete, but a Saskatchewan kid and what a great signing by Jeremy O'Day because first of all, he could still play. I mean, John Ryan's 37, but he could still play and he could hit that football. And to have a local kid with a Super Bowl ring back on the team, you know what he said at the press conference? After over 10 years in the National Football League, John Ryan in the press conference where he signed as a Saskatchewan player said, this is my dream come true. Started as the Regina Ram back in 2000, 2003. How about that? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. But an outstanding signing for so many reasons. Starting with what he does on the field. But beyond that, he'll be a great ambassador for the team and the community. 
Because he's one of theirs. Jersey sales be through the roof. Arbuckle downfield. Trying to get a hand on it there. Once again, was Griff Whaley. Couldn't come up with it. Yeah, here's, here's the other aspect of, of John Ryan's game. He's a good athlete. You saw him as a Ram for sure. But even at the pro level, I mean, John Ryan can run the fake. That's something that teams now in the CFL, because he's a sketch and rough rider, are going to have to guard against. He's a good athlete. He can throw the football. He can run with the football. Better make sure you spy him when he when he punts it. Big play there against the Packers that turned the fortunes for the Seahawks in that game. Here's our buckle. Pretty good fortunes for him right now. Dan Fleet 10 nothing downfield and that one batted down. Good job getting a hand on that one. That's Sean Davis. And Dyshawn Davis has got some experience and he's got that's the second time he's got his hands on the football I believe it was him that that tipped that one over the middle that was actually caught by Josh Huff but he did get his hands on a couple and it's funny when when all of a sudden guys that the coach mentions without being asked in your pregame meeting he was one of them and of course he comes out and makes plays tonight stamps forced to Kick this away. And that one will fall just inside the 45. And this time it is Moro. And he gets back up to about the 40. Well, I sat with Henry at our seminar. Oh, you take, so okay, you I got to go Henry. with Henry, sorry. Because I have to take Manny. I mean, yeah, yeah, I got to take Manny. He's a veteran in our crew, so I'm going to take Manny. Hey, what a great idea. The prospects game. Uh oh ball will come out loose out of the hands of Mitchell Picton and that is going to be a turnover Calgary Stampeders that Marco Myers in the mix there did Nate Hawley get involved from the linebacking core to pop it out I think he was member down on the goal line just to the right of your screen look for number 40 for the Calgary Stampeders he steps up makes the hit ball comes out there so that's a forced fumble for Nate Hawley, who's trying to make a starting spot possibly in this linebacking core. He has been involved so far here tonight, no doubt about it. It was that Minnesota Vikings rookie camp. It was a training camp with the Rams in 2018 as well out of Kent State. Arbuckle looks downfield in that one. No chance there. I want to get back to that prospects game yes. quickly because I want to get full props to to Dwayne Ford, who is another obviously back for another year as a color analyst with What's us up, at TSN. Nick, Dan. Our executive producer, of course, Paul Graham, also helped with the construction of this to make it work and to make it happen. And it'll be on television. Young top prospects, young athletes before their college careers began to get a chance to showcase their skills. We see it in hockey all the time in our yep. country, but I just absolutely love this concept. I got Maddie, you got Henry. <laughs> Let's watch that tomorrow. Here's Arbuckle now. Steps up, finds a man that's caught at the 35, complete to Griff Whalen. Takes it down to about the 31. Griff Whalen, pickup of 17 yards. Whalen, 43 NFL games under his belt. Three touchdowns, actually, down south. Punch formation. Found a hole. Well, hand it off this time, and really nowhere to go there. And as the Riders' D closes things up at the line there for Leacher. Calgary Stampeders looking to add to their 10-0 lead here in the second quarter. Thank you very much. 10-0 Stampeders lead. Arbuckle trying to lead them on another scoring drive. He's 6 of 10 for exactly 100 yards. Whalen will kind of roll back into his left here. Now Arbuckle thought about going down the middle of the field. Good decision as he finds Leacher on the far side. Nice decision making. We were talking about it when we were off air there. You like some of the decisions the young guy's making. Yeah, Nick Arbuckle, when he breaks contain or breaks the pocket, is doing it with his eyes up. Often young quarterbacks in preseason games will try and, and take off and run, and as soon as they see a seam, they, they get their head down, 
and they're just looking for as many yards as they can get running the football. But Arbuckle in those back-to-back -back plays scrambled a little bit, adjust his, his throwing lane, and found receivers downfield. Bo Levi watching on as Arbuckle steps in here, first and 10 from the 18. Rolls to his right again. <laughs> Threw that one out of harm's way as he didn't look like he saw anything that he liked with a little bit of pressure coming his way. Uh, absolutely. And and that's that goes as a plus in the evaluation so process. That's a check mark. That's a yeah. check mark and a plus for you it, basically the player on every play, and every player will be evaluated after every single play by the coaching staff. So the quarterback will get a plus, a minus, or an even. And and that would be a plus. Even though it was an incomplete throw, it was the right decision based on the coverage and what they saw downfield. Calgary, four of eight here on second down conversions. Arbuckle trying to pick up a first down here. A little bit of time this time. Looks to the end zone, has a man, touchdown! Griff Whalen and the Stampeders extend their lead as Arbuckle finds his man in the end zone. I would suggest that Nick Arbuckle has just sort of solidified his spot in that number two slot at quarterback for Calgary. Showing some poise throughout this drive, some rhythm, and then his arm strength on display there with that touchdown throw right down the middle. If Whalen had LJ McCray trailing him into the end zone, and Arbuckle found him. Oscar Silva, second crack at an extra point, and he's got it this time. As one of the new global players here in the Canadian Football League, hammers it home to give the Stampeders a 17-0 cushion. Griff Whalen's making some plays, too. I mean... Take a look at the, the numbers for him, but I believe that's his fourth catch. third or fourth catch in this in this first half and that'll be a touchdown his efforts to try and make this football team the starting lineup also returned to punt for them the one that right. went back on a penalty but returned to punt as well so he's kind of been really heavily involved here in the second quarter of this game and nice debut here for Griff Whalen you mentioned his NFL experience yeah over so. 40 games 43 games play that's You're okay, a good baby. chunk of change down there so maybe a guy who can come up here and Make a difference as well. It's good to see. Happy with his performance so far. The ball kicked off down to just inside the 20. And it'll be brought back there, I believe, by Morrow. And he'll take it up outside his own 30. And that's where the Riders offense still looking to strike for the first time. We'll go to work with 216 remaining here in the first half. Yeah, and, and David Watford just be quite frank has not looked very good in his in his opportunities here he's fumbled the opening snap a little bit of a low snap but he should have contained it and and maybe even thrown it away if he had to but that struggled a little bit in this first half not really a lot of time to evaluate these guys so you got to make the most of your opportunity absolutely right? gotta be right now watch for down the middle and that one complete nice catch there by Austin Ellsworth as he went to the ground to scoop it up and and the first real good throw from from Watford and it wasn't it wasn't outstanding it was it was pretty good it got the job done but it was low and away and Ellsworth had to come back and get his arms underneath that or it, or it one hops Watford's got to tune in that, that accuracy a little bit more Ellsworth out of Illinois College here Trying to crack the roster. Watford just pass behind the intended yeah. target that time of Davis. It's just, you know, at this level, it's it's literally inches. It's it's a little bit behind the receiver, and it doesn't happen because the coverage is just so tight. You don't get a second to reload it or to adjust your route very often. There's their starter. That, that's that's gonna happen. And Zach Kalaros, and I think Cody Fajardo did a lot in that first quarter to earn that second spot. Lots of time to go yet. Riders 5 of 10 on second down conversions. Watford looking to add to that, and he will. There you go. 
Well, one complete over the middle as he had a receiver kind of sit down there as Mitchell Pickton, who fumbled earlier in the quarter. And they'll get the first down here for this Riders offense. And there's a good solid throw, right? Right in between the numbers. Watford is, you can tell, consciously staying in the pocket. Like He knows what we talked about earlier, that he has to prove to get the number two spot behind Caleros that he can run the passing game. So he's hanging in there in the pocket. Now he just has to tune in that accuracy like the last throw. Should be fine. Minute and a half remaining here in the second quarter. Watford in the Riders' offense on the 47 of the stamp. Some pressure coming this time. Watford saw it, got rid of that ball, and a completion to Kyle Davis. Amazing, isn't it? This confidence. It's the same in every sport. You know, you make a couple of good shots off the tee box, and all of a sudden, your, your short game I don't make good <laughs> shots off the tee box, but thanks for rubbing it in, Glenn. It, it can go the other way, too. You know, you, you get a couple into the woods, and all of a sudden, your confidence is shot, and you can't play, and Watford's getting that confidence back. A little bit of a rhythm here. Okay, I think it's in a bonus. And uh, the practice game that they had, he liked the rhythm and control that both of the quarterbacks, Fajardo and Watford, had. And Watford getting some help here as they handed that ball off to Jamal Morrow in the game here. And uh, they pick up the first down. When you talk about his athleticism, I mean, there's a guy who was with the Eagles as a receiver back in 16. Quarterback call. Watford looking this time to the end zone, up for grabs. Almost managed to get his hands on that. An excellent effort there from Paul McRoberts, who we were told to watch for in that stretching of the field, and that's what he did right there. Yeah, Craig Dickinson mentioned to us, take a look at number 88. He's got pretty good size, six foot three, 195 pounds, good strider. And I said, is he a route runner, or is he a burner, or both, or, or what's his what's his skill set? He said, he's a stretch guy. He's a guy that can hit that seam and go get the football. And, Every offense needs a stretch guy. Jamari Gilbert in coverage on that play, one-on-one -on -one there against McRoberts. Second and ten, Watford steps back, finds a man, Pickton, and Pickton will be wrapped up there by Jamari Gilbert. And that will bring up third down for the Riders. Another U of R product. He was an absolute stud, too. Very difficult to cover, Canada West. I know football fans will know that you've called a lot of Canada West games. Mitchell Pickton, Noah Pickton, yeah. quarterback, excellent as well. And that's why I like the high school game so much. As a guy who's done university games for 10 years, there's a lot of good players coming out of high school that nobody in the country really knows about. It. So it's prospects nice game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Felix Menard Briere to put the Riders on the board, and he misses it. It'll fly out of the end zone. One of the better drives for the Riders comes up with one point as they trail 17-1. There's the veteran in, in John Ryan going over to Menard Briere and saying, don't worry about that one. We may need you later in the game. Let it go. But really didn't head that very well. Got like He got right in the middle of the football and it just shot left. He knows it. 26-year-old out of Montreal, like a do-over at some point. 25 seconds left to work here for the Stampeders. Our buckle remains in there. And the ball off. Right up the gut. Dietre takes it just outside 40. And some fans might say, you know, if you're evaluating quarterbacks, you're evaluating receivers, why are you running the ball in the preseason? <laughs> but, you know, you, you also have to evaluate offensive linemen. You have to evaluate your tailbacks and their vision and what they see and how they run the ball in the second effort. It's not a lot of time, right, to evaluate everybody. It's so many guys dressed. Some jobs open up front, too, on that old line for God. Our buckle again. Peter takes it down for the first down, working his way up towards the 50. Bartlett and McCray in there to wrap him up. Excellent flow to end the half as the Stampeders, defending Great Cup champions, picking up where they left off. 17 to 1, the lead over the Riders here as we kick off our coverage on TSN.
been a good Friday night here for the Stampeders. They lead 17 to 1. Jermaine Franklin with head coach Dave Dickens. Well, Dave, first preseason game. What did you like out of Nick Arbuckle? Well, I think our quarterback play has been good anyway. I think Bo started it with a couple big plays. Obviously, uh, we're going against their twos and threes. Um, but we wanted some rhythm, some timing. Nick's working a pocket. It's not like it's that open. He's making some time and, and moving around and uh, making some big plays. It's a storyline we've been asking about all week. Uh, but did you notice your brother on the other sideline? I, I haven't even seen him, so I hope he's coaching over there. But, yeah, I haven't even seen him. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's one focused man hasn't even seen him he hopes he's coaching over there. wow hey you know i mean it's it's not like they haven't coached against each other it's just interesting that they're both head coaches now and it's a storyline that they're not going to shake for the first half of the season i guarantee you i have to get used to that no yeah. doubt about it gabe ferrero to kick things off here for the stampeders and that's a kick that'll come down just inside the 15 and it'll be brought back by Moro. and a nice return from Jamal Morrow, who's in competition with James Butler. Butler in the return game as well. And Morrow there with the best return of the game, a 30-yarder here to start the second half. And he'll stay in the offensive huddle. Looks like it'll be David Watford at least one more series. And Morrow in the backfield. And, and I neglected to mention one of the top free agent signings in the first half at that tailback spot because Morrow and Butler are, are competing for the number two spot behind William Powell. Standing deep our running back from Ottawa. Big pickup for the Riders offense. There's a completion for Watford as he finds Ellsworth for his second catch of the game. We showed you the Calgary changes from their championship season, and here's some changes for Saskatchewan. The ads, Manny Arsenal from the BC Lions. There's William Powell, Corey Watson, AC Leonard back with the Riders, Micah Johnson, former Stamp Peter. Solomon Elamimian is nicked right now. But he will probably, well, he won't probably. He'll be the middle linebacker in their defense. Willie Jefferson's a big loss. And a gain for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Hand it off here to Morrow. And Morrow pushes ahead for the first down. A nice carry for Jamal Morrow. You talked about earlier being part of that Washington State offense. He's a guy who could definitely get involved out of the backfield catching the ball. 4,200 all-purpose yards at Washington State for Jamal Morrow. So, yeah, you know, and again, they're, they're looking for that number two, the backup tailback spot, competing for that. We've been watching that a little bit tonight. Butler's made some plays as well, and his head coach mentioned it. Yeah, half time. that's right. Craig Dickinson said that uh, Butler was one of the guys that impressed him, so Morrow trying to answer that challenge. Now here's Watford. He's going to be pressing rolls to his right, uses his speed, and then throws a high ball up and over the outstretched arms of Kyron Moore. David Watford last year would have run that football. Just kept it gone. Yeah, he would have he would have tucked it once he got outside here and taken off and run with it. But he is trying to prove that he can run the passing game. Now that one's a little high and wide, but and Craig Dickinson, by the way, did say we should see Isaac Parker tonight and Ty Ganji. Two more guys to get to. Watford getting a little bit of an extra look here to start the third quarter. And he wants a timeout. Didn't like what he saw with second and ten here on the Calgary 53. Timeout, Saskatchewan. But I'll tell you, that, that signing of William Powell, and he's back in Saskatchewan watching this one on television, and the combination of a healthy Zach Kolaris. Craig Dickinson's looking for the number two job. Zach is his starter and with a solid and consistent running game. Now they had a good one last year, but a solid and consistent running game, improved O-line play, and you're gonna see Zach Kolaros, the much better player that he was back in the day. And I know the guys talked about how that was a long, long time ago now, but high expectations for Zach Kolaros this year. Better O-line and a good running game. Here's Watford out of the time now, find Ellsworth again. First down, so Austin Ellsworth going to work here at Illinois College in his first game with the Riders. Rider fans were a little concerned with Zach's 
inner squat game. He was one for 10 in the inner squat game. And, and you know, <laughs> when you, if you listen to the Saskatchewan fans, it, it only takes that for them to be nervous <laughs> about their starting quarterback. And I asked Craig Dickinson about it. He said he was, he goes, look, no, he, he's, he's our undisputed starter. And this past week, he completed over 80% of his passes in practice. He's fine. Looks good, in shape, lost a little weight. Zach's ready. So you say don't press the panic button. Not yet. If you're a Riders fan watching, here's a deep toss, and that one's going to be intercepted inside the end zone. Excellent play there by Gump Hayes as Watford went for all of it, didn't get any of it as Hayes stepped in there in that one-on-one -on -one coverage. And the Calgary Stampac Stampeders defense continues to make plays. Gump Hayes for the interception. Pays with the interception. Coaches want to put the spotlight on players and see what they do when the lights, the game lights are on them. This is excellent coverage in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Gump Hayes has complete control of Kyram Moore and now has as much right to the football in the air as the receiver. And he comes up with a nice interception. You like Watford's decision to throw that ball? Not really. Not, and not just because of how it turned out. Just the decision itself. Because that was, you can't cover any better in a one-on-one if -on -one. Hayes was step for step with more. Watford getting a look at it there. Gump Hayes. Hayes. And 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 look at the turnovers in this game. Calgary looking out for the ball. The Riders. Like, this is my baby girl, so dog. Much. This is for the baby girl. I'll tell you, he, gets, he goes into the all-name team, too. You get Gump Hayes. <laughs> I'm liking that. You keep track of that? Well, we got it. Suits yeah. the all name team. All like name it. team. Montel Cozart is in the game at quarterback right now for the Calgary Stampeders. Ladarius Galloway standing to his left now. Two players out to the left. Cozart tried to get the ball into the hands there of Herji Mayala. He could not hang on to it. That'll be a quick two and out there for the Stamps offense. Kozar getting a chance to get some reps here. Can't throw it any better. Was the right read on that crossing route. Ayala drafted eighth overall out of UConn. Dickinson, Dave Dickinson mentioned him and, and that he's had a good camp. Again, put the spotlight on him. Oscar Silva with the punt in for Maver. Is that one? Scooped up at the 40 by Morrow, but he had nowhere to go. Sam Peters defense doing the job. Now, no Zach Kalaros tonight, but he is with our Jermaine Franklin. Thank you very much, Dustin. Zach, uh, first question would be, how is this year's training camp going for you? And are you a little more comfortable in your second year now in the green and white? Yeah, it's been a great training camp so far. Um, Anytime you're coming back to a familiar situation, you know, I think you're, you're more comfortable. And, and for me, that, that is the case, obviously. I mean, starting a new job, uh, going anywhere, the first year is a, a little different. You meet new people and all that stuff. So, like, yeah, just knowing the guys and uh, walking in this year made it a lot easier. What would you say the keys are for you um, to have the most success possible? And what are some of the goals you have this year? You know, obviously to win, win games is the, the, the main goal, but, uh, you know, key to success for any quarterback is, uh, you know, doing your job at, at a high level and executing the plays. Uh, you know, we get a lot of praise and a lot of blame, so, uh, you know, making sure everybody's tuned in around us and, uh, and things will be good. And uh, last question, uh, I know you can only control what you can control, and that's why I ask you about your health, and is there anything that you can do to make sure that you're on the field as much as possible? You know, again, just uh, try to play smart, uh, try to get the ball, ball out of my hands in a timely manner, and uh, those things will take care of itself. Thanks so much. Sam. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Thank you very much, Jermaine, and, of course, Zach Kolaros for giving us some time here in the third quarter of this game. He missed the first series for Isaac Harker, who checked into the game. Well, we have a 2 and up, but we'll get another look at, at Harker there, who went to the Colorado School of Mines. Yeah. If you've never heard of it, you're like us. Yeah, and, and, and you got to be real smart to get in. <laughs> Very smart to get in, yes. Punt from the 40. This one out of bounds inside the 15. No ball to return there for the Stam Peters. How does MasterChef Canada cut the top five down to three? Well, with back-to-back -back episodes, MasterChef Canada is special time Monday 
at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock Mountain only on CTV, and then stream anytime. I hope the PVR is set up for back-to-backs. I'm a horrible chef, so I like watching people do it on TV. I love it. I, I do the Ramsey dinners all the time. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Hey, you know, didn't you think that Zach looks good? I mean, physically, he looks good. He, I, Craig Dickinson was saying that Claris lost about seven, ten pounds somewhere in there, and he looks strong. No concussion issues at all. He's good to go. Cozart's going to take a shot here to start this drive, but that one over the head and out of the reach of Daniel Braverman. Cozart brought in here last year as a third string guy, 23 year old out of Boise State. Came in partway through the year, I believe. Academic All Big 12 a couple years back. But getting off to a, the same sort of start that David Watford did for Saskatchewan a little bit. Just not running the offense, just trying to make a big play happen. There you go. That's his first completion, and it's to Galloway. And Ladarius Galloway is going to pick up a first down on the far sideline. Galloway signed just three weeks ago on May 7th. Getting thrown into the fire here in the third quarter. Yep, pops out of the backfield there, and nice look down the field by Montel Cozart, and then dumps it down to his back. Does the heavy lift from there. First down for Cozart. It'll be first and ten here on the Stampeder 30-yard line. Lead by 16. Buster Nielsen and Glenn Suter with you. Empty backfield for Cozart. Thought about stepping up. Second thoughts now he's going to be pressured and just throw that ball away with a flag on the far side of the field. He had a receiver and a double move down the sideline, but the safety on the play, Mike Adam is out for Saskatchewan right now. And Illegal it was contact. Jacob Dearborn. Saskatchewan, number 25. 10-yard penalty. First down. Jacob Dearborn out of out of Carlton who who flew over there to help out. I mean, this is the attended target, but there was a a broken route down the sideline where Calgary did have an open receiver. He was out on the outside. There's the there's the contact. You're going to see up here the double move, and you see he's open, but the safety's coming from the middle. And you'll see 33, in the, and that's why Kozar didn't throw it. Solomon Means on the penalty there. Four games played last year with the Eskimos. Here's Kozar, pressure coming, sees it, drops it off. Nice play there, and that is caught for a first down, and a little bit more. Stumbling down to the 45, Colton Hunchak with his first touch of the football game. Well, first of all, Montel Kozar just hanging in there because this one took some time to develop with some pressure coming off the edge. That's the safety. You don't see that very often in preseason, the safety blitz, but Saskatchewan sent one. Kozar retreated, bought some time, and got it out to his number one target. Unjack's a Calgary kid, actually. Played his college ball at York. 73rd overall in the draft. Now they'll hand it off. There's a big hole on the left side here. What a room to run for Galloway. And he'll take it down inside the 20. That's the biggest play on the ground for either team so far in this football game. Nice vision from Ladarius Galloway here. He's going to take this inside handoff and look at that vision to bounce outside. There's no contain from the Saskatchewan defense. Again, Dave Dickinson mentioned it. They're playing their second and third team guys, which is fine. But Ladarius Galloway isn't exactly a starter with CFL experience either. That's a nice run by 14. 25 yard pick up there for Galloway. Stands in to the right here of Kozart. Kozart's going to look to the end zone. No. A little bit too far there. He was looking for Simon Atley, the all time leading rusher at Regina here as the Stampeders look to move him to the outside. He was the guy open down the sideline, so I'm not. Wouldn't be surprised at all if Dave Dickinson saw that play and said, we've got something similar in the playbook. Let's go ahead and call that, see if we can get him open again. And Dearborn, the safety for Saskatchewan, he flew over again and was almost there to intercept that. Second and 10 from the 18 for Kozar. Put together a pretty good drive here. 
Six and a half to play in the third quarter. Three targets to his right, goes to his left. And it did not look like Christian Gibbs was ready for that ball. Christian Gibbs, now, they're going to have to go back, know the play, to, to basically take a look and evaluate the quarterback and the receiver on this play. You've got to know, first of all, what the design of it was, but it looked like a little indecision there from Gibbs. He just came out of his break unsure. Now, Dave Dickinson talking to Cozart, maybe saying that wasn't the read anyway. We we're going to a different player. Gabe Ferraro with a low, hard kick after it looked as though the snap was bobbled, but he's able to put it home for the Calgary Stampeders. They extend their lead. Oh, yeah, I think they do. Dance team getting ready for another season. Silva boots this thing away. Stepping back and picking it up at the six is Butler. Ooh, Butler's wrapped up in a hurry as downfield air, Fraser Sopic. Out of Western, drafted 31st overall in this past year's draft. Finding a spot on special teams, baby. This, this is how you make the team. This, this is it right here. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a great college career at UCLA or Alabama or any of it, or Western. And it doesn't matter if you played in the NFL or whatever. You get here, you got to prove yourself again on the teams. And Fraser Sopek just did a nice job on that cover. Another look here at Isaac Parker as he hands it off to Morrow. And Morrow pushes ahead for a nice pickup there on first down. Carry of nine. There's the draft pick right there. 31st overall at linebacker and, and again unsolicited. I didn't ask Dave about his draft picks necessarily, Dave Dickinson, and, and he brought up Fraser Sopek. He said, you know, we're looking at linebackers in a big way, but they got to play on the teams. Sopek goes a long way to making the team when he makes a tackle like he just did. Here is Harker. Harking out instructions. Hand it off again and putting his head down and Moving that ball forward, Jamal Morrow, and Dickinson talked about it at halftime. He really liked the play at Butler, and I think Morrow's done some good things here in the second half as well. well. We always sort of pick favorites going into a season based on the known entities. You, you pick it based on the guys that you know, the players with experience that you've seen, been there and done that. So the wild card is always the guy that you haven't heard of yet. He's talking to Butler right now, Craig Dickinson. And one of these young guys are going to step up and become stars. Parker, side ball to his right. Looking downfield, drops it off over the top. Nice play, and that is caught just inside the 50 as he got it into the waiting hands of Albert Awachi. Good composure by Isaac Harker here on the full roll. Now the play is designed for him to get outside and then try and cause some problems across the board defensively for Calgary because they're not sure if they should come up and tackle the quarterback or they should stay back in coverage and he kind of throws it in behind him there. Confidence builder there for Harker. 23 year old. Valedictorian in high school. That's how you get into the Colorado School of Mines. Gotta be the way. <laughs> Here's Harker now with four targets to his left. Quickly looks to his right. That's where he's going to go. And he was looking for Austin Ellsworth. He was pulled in a couple of passes so far in this game, but that one was defended all right. Yeah, it was defended because that was a good throw. It really was. I mean, he put it low and away. Zip on it. A nice zip on the ball. Absolutely. Around the, the arm of a defender, and that ball was absolutely catchable. Reese Fleming there in coverage. Parker now, second and ten, working on his own. 49 here for the Riders. The pressure coming this time. Parker in trouble. And he is taken down right up the middle there. Tresser Mafuda. Parker didn't have many other options on this one. So both quarterbacks, the brothers, well, one former quarterback, and, and now both head coaches, the brothers, tell us, no, we're going to play all cover one. 
which is which is straight basic defense. We're not going to blitz. We're going to blitz each other in the preseason. I've seen safety blitzes. I've seen linebacker blitzes. They look greasy between, but you can never trust the sibling. They're, <laughs> they're competing. That's a nice kick from Menard Grier. Be returned here by Huff. Huff will take it up to the 32. Eventually had a leg wrapped up there as the Calgary Stampeders have this preseason tilt under control. They lead 20 to 1. Riders trailing the Stampeders 20 to 1. And the Riders offense struggling a little bit tonight, but their defense so good last year, and obviously some spots to fill this year, Glenn. Yeah, well, Samuel Aguavin, one of their linebackers, of course, down in the NFL now, and, and Cameron Judge, who got a lot of playing time last year on the teams and rotated through the starting lineup and defense. He's going to be asked to step up and take a bigger sort of leadership role in that group. But you're going to have to try and replace Willie Jefferson. I, I best mention him up front. He's now a Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Big ad for Mike O'Shea and his crew. But who's going to get the pressure off the edge? Charleston Hughes back at home still. A.C. Leonard back at home in Saskatchewan for the Riders. Cameron Judge, you saw a shot up there. They drafted his brother, Christopher Judge. This year as well, leading to the 2019 draft. Clearly some early movement there. And remember, Chris Jones is also down in the NFL now. And Procedure, Calgary, number 62. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. Jason Shivers takes over now. He's worked with Chris Jones for years, so it will be a similar defense again, but it evolves over time. You just can't stay the same or else offenses are too good and we'll pick it up. But that's the new offense, our defensive coordinator for Saskatchewan. Cozart still in the game here, quarterback for the Stampeders. Over the middle of that one. Out of the hands there of Colton Unchak, who had a catch here earlier in the third quarter. That's what these coaches are trying to evaluate. Find, find these guys that are that are going to step up and make plays and and not let the moment of a of a real game against an opponent at the at the next level, especially if you're a young college kid coming straight out of school, to overwhelm you. Checks made some nice plays, a couple of nice plays tonight. Cozart here, Galloway standing to his left. Give it to him, Galloway. Snuck out of the backfield there. Tries to cut it back to the middle, and the Riders close that off quickly. Chad Jeter comes back. I, you know, he's he's a guy who returns, and when talking about that pressure up front, he's vying for a starting spot, or at least to be in the front rotation. And, and tremendous hustle because those two DNs went down, but they didn't quit there. And I guarantee you, Craig Dickinson watching film and Jason Shivers watching film of Jeter on that play are going to say, that's the second effort you need to make the team and make the starting rotation. Silva to kick this away from his 20. He's down at the 44. Picked up there. Really nowhere to go on the return for James Butler. A nice confidence builder here for the Riders offense to get something going. I know it's just a preseason game, but for a lot of these guys who are trying to make a team, make one or two plays here to get the offense going, probably going to go a long way for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you, you know, you want to see your quarterbacks have some success. You want to see some rhythm, and, and you want to have a chance to evaluate all the players, give them their best chance to make the team. But and Craig Dickinson, there was a couple of eyebrows in Saskatchewan when he said, you know, we, we're not playing to win the game. And everyone, what, what, what? Don't you always play to win the game? More on that, go ahead. <laughs> Parker has this one off. And that is brought ahead there by Corey Watson. But you know, it, it's, it was funny because it was just the wording. Yeah. Because winning and playing to win is a given. You, you're not playing this sport at this level, or any sport for that matter, if you're not always trying to win. And I, you know, what he was saying is that the final result, what those numbers say on that bug down there, 20 to one right now, really don't matter in this game. What matters is a chance to evaluate. Parker hands it on this time to Morrow. And Morrow's pretty darn close to a first down there for the Riders. So Morrow following up on the heels of 
Butler about guys who are trying to impress and be evaluated by that man right there, Craig Dickinson. That'd be tough to be coaching this game because you, I mean, you're coaching the game. You can't really evaluate all these guys. No, no, that, like a big play here or there, you'll remember the name. But. Sure, but that happens. First of all, they're they're looking at everything. You know how you handle yourself on the bench, how you handle yourself after a mistake. And then they go back and analyze the film over and over. That's where the real evaluation begins. Here's Harker in trouble, gets away, now dumps it off. And that one will be caught for a short gain there by Albert Awachi. A couple of catches for him in the third quarter, which wraps up with the Calgary Stampeders in full control here at home against the Riders, looking to get something going offensively in this preseason tilt. 20 to 1, the defending champions with the lead. Numbers do matter, and that's part of the evaluation process. By the way, it's plus, minus, or even, right? And I've given you a whole bunch of pluses, <laughs> rookie, so you got a bunch of check marks there. Nice job for three quarters, and we'll finish this fourth. I thought Nick Arbuckle basically validated what Dave Dickinson already thinks of him as the number two behind Bo Levi Mitchell. And if you if you were starting the regular season tomorrow, Cody Vajardo is the backup to Zach Kolaros. Yeah, still another game for those guys to sure. maybe work a little bit, but I think it was pretty obvious watching those two guys tonight, especially with the slow start that Watford had. Vajardo came in, was pretty consistent all the way through. Yeah, it looked like he, he had good command and control of the huddle and was running the offense successfully. Didn't finish the drive, I'm sure he would like to have, but he was the best of the other quarterbacks. 10 of 12 for 73 yards when Cody Fajardo was in the game. Fourth quarter, underway. Harker remains in the game here for the Riders. That pass deflected at the line and drops incomplete just outside of the 40. And for the defending champions, and they are champions until dethroned. Oh, Levi Mitchell, just flick of the wrist, looked real good in his first two throws. It's Julon who's his champion. He's going that way! Aaron! 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 Aaron. Has been enjoying the, the game from the sideline ever since. Anai <laughs> Briere to kick it away from the 50. Look at the stutter step, but he gets it off. That'll be taken just inside the 10. And that was Griff Whalen on the return. Had a touchdown earlier in the game, a couple of turns as well, trying to find a spot on this Stampeders club. Well, Griff Whalen has made some plays. Yeah, I mean, he's made a couple of plays. I thought Josh Huff showed some things for Calgary as far as young receivers go. Montel Cozart will remain in here at quarterback for the Stampeders, been able to move the ball a little bit. And of course, Don Jackson is the starting tailback. Dave Dickinson really likes his tailback group, the entire group. And the good news that Romar Morris may be back earlier than first expected, I think, is a bonus for Dickinson. But he likes his backfield this year. And Don Jackson's not dressed tonight, but he'll be the starter. He's the go-to guy on the backfield. But yeah, a lot of a lot of depth for them. Obviously, with having Williams there, Kozart is three of eight. For 45 yards, I don't mind the way he's thrown the ball so far here. Well, he's always got good arm strength. Yeah, yeah. You know, but again, accuracy decisions, which guy to throw to, and you basically got to get the offense rolling. I mean, that's it's it's not that complicated. Arbuckle did it exactly. Yeah. Got to get the offense rolling. Cozart here, man swinging in behind him, makes the handoff, rolls to his left. A ton of room has a man that is complete with some speed to the 40 and a lot of room on the far side here for Braverman. Braverman almost wrapped up and eventually taken down inside the 40. Daniel Braverman with a huge offensive play. Well, first of all, great play action fake by Kozar. And a nice throw against the floor. Rolling to his left, got to go across the body to get there. And how about the picking him up and putting him down here? Calgary receiver is showing he's got some speed. 56 yards for Braverman. I see you, Daniel Braverman. Seven round, seventh round pick of the Bears back in 16. He's got some quicks. 
stops in KC and Arizona as well. Now Cozart dumps this one off. And there is a lot of room there up the field for Atley Simon with his first catch of the game. Been targeted three times. 21 yard pickup. The Canadian receiver, they may go with two Canadian receivers. Atley Simon's been moved to that back sort of scat back position, can play both slot back, tailback. But you take a look at that competition. Julon Lynch is in it. Michael Klukas is in it. Zendani is in it. And that's an open competition for that extra Canadian receiver. They'll hand it off underneath. And that is a nice pickup there for Josh Huff, who you mentioned a little bit earlier here in the quarter, making some plays. He returned kicks, been receiving, and that time showed that he could move a little bit on the ground as well. Injured Saskatchewan. Rough rider on the play. That's Blaze Brown. School in Troy, and we'll get an update on him coming up here as the Stampeders full control, 21. Well, welcome back to McMahon Stadium. We just talked about the competition at Canadian receiver. Julon Lynch is part of that competition and on cue makes a block here. Now, Brown got nicked. He's going to be fine on the play, but receivers have got to make those blocks downfield for their teammates, part of making the team, part of the evaluation. The U of S product in his third season. I mean, that's some kind of program over there at the University of Saskatchewan Huskies. Started out with Brian Towers for all those years. Of course, Scott Flory taking over and doing a great job with that program. What a hearty cut right here on this field this past season. And now wrapped up from behind there, trying to find the corner of the end zone. Gerald Holmes almost got there. Holmes was almost home free, wrapped up at the last second, had one man to beat, couldn't do it. Got him down to the two though, second and two here for Kozar. Hands it off again, shooting his way in to the end zone for the touchdown. Daryl Holmes, second crack at it, and he gets it done. Touchdown, Stan Peters, and they continue to roll. What's the difference between the previous play and that one? That one, Holmes is going downhill. You're not going to wrap him up around the ankle when he's coming right at you, are you? Good job for Holmes here. He gets in, gets two touches, almost scored on the first one, and finishes the job on the second one. The school at Michigan State. Spent a week on the practice roster last year. Extra point. No doubt about it. Hammered home by hey, Gabe going, Ferraro. Hey, 27 to 1. Stan Peters lead. Until Kozar and the touchdown drive. Let's take another look at it. Gets out and gets things started with a nice throw and run by Daniel Braverman, the Western Michigan product. Offense rolling here. I, th I think what happened in this drive is Montel Kozar saw our break. <laughs> and when I said the, the regular season starts tomorrow and Nick Arbuckle's probably number two, he said, but the regular season doesn't start tomorrow. We still have another preseason game, and I've got another drive to go to work, and that drive capped with that Holmes run. Five plays, 94 yards. Montel Kozart gets it done. And all three quarter, I mean, Bo Levi, Bo Levi, he looked great. Arbuckle looked pretty good. Now Kozart leads him on a touchdown drive as well. So former quarterback himself, Dave Dickinson, got to be pretty pleased with what he sees so far. On the other side for the Riders, as they get set to take the ball back, we may see Ty Ganji. I'm not sure if he's warming up yet on the sideline. Isaac Harker got the third quarter of this game. Well, Watford got the beginning of it. And then Harker took over. He has four quarterbacks here tonight. So he's taken at the 10 and brought back ahead by 
Mike Roberts. And he'll take it just outside the 30. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Isaac Harker again. We'll take a good long look at him in this first game. You know, when you're, if you're a, a, a three or a four in the pecking order at quarterback, you've got to be concerned, like a guy like Ty Ganji right now, because in the next game for Saskatchewan, Zach Clark is going to take at, at least a quarter, probably a half. Yeah, to you still got to look up. at the other two guys. And you still got to look at the other guys, so your, your chances and your opportunities start to disappear quickly. Parker with a completion into the hands there of Kyle Davis. That'll be a first down for Parker and the Riders. Good throw and catch there. Nice rhythm, rhythm throw for Parker. Key to success on those type of throws is timing. Here's a look at Ty Ganji out of Nevada. Parker now with three receivers to his left. Looks down the middle of the field. Now on the right side, and that'll be complete for a first down to McRoberts. On the field, that receiver is Max Zimmerman, part of the global experiment by Randy Ambrosi in the Canadian Football League. He is from Germany and has become just a, a tremendous teammate in a short amount of time. His teammates absolutely love the guy. And Craig Dickinson was telling us an awesome story about how tough he is. I mean, first of all, left his job as a teacher to go all in on his opportunity here with Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He twisted his ankle early in training camp. Parker in trouble there and he throws it away. Twisted his ankle early in training camp and he's been, he has just absolutely refused to come off the practice field. So Craig Dickinson and the staff have been saying, listen, just take a break and let your ankle settle down a little bit. He goes, absolutely not. I am not taking a moment off. In fact, Craig Dickinson told us yesterday that it swole up so bad a couple of days ago that Zimmerman went to the training staff and said, do you have a bigger shoe for that leg? <laughs> because I'm not coming out. <laughs> Requesting a bigger shoe to keep playing. That's why he was taken sixth overall by the Riders in the European draft, the CFL 2.0. Big opportunity for him. And to, and to give up full-time job as a teacher to come and take a crack at this thing. Um, I love it. It says so much about his character, right? You know, I love it. And, you know, he, he said, I'm putting all my chips in the middle of the table. This is an outstanding opportunity. I don't know if you saw the Twitter clip from Mike Loche, the head coach in Winnipeg, who talked about these global players. And I think it's, it's the same idea across the board is that they may not even speak English, but they speak football. And they love the game and completely respect it. So they're out there battling. I love it. Pressure coming on Harker. Sees it, got rid of the ball, but threw it short as he was looking for Mick Roberts there on third and five. So the Riders' offense stalls again. Fifth turnover of the game. They trail 27 to 1. Welcome back to our preseason coverage here, CFL on TSN. And we're in the preseason, which means the regular season isn't that far away, Suits. Bring it on, baby. Saskatchewan will start in Hamilton. Montreal takes on the Edmonton Eskimos. This is going to be an interesting Grey Cup rematch. Completely different Ottawa offense against a completely different Calgary defense in the rematch of last year's Grey Cup championship. And off. Brought ahead there by Ladarius Galloway. He took that ball from Troy Cook, who is now in the game. And you've got a Troy Cook story from a little bit earlier on about the AAF. Well, they had their, their one player regional quarterback that they drafted protected. And I know the league didn't last very long, but he was the very first pick overall. The Memphis Express. So, yes, it didn't last long, but kind of interesting. He'll always have that. He'll always have that. Yeah. Put that down in your phones for trivia later on, people. Now here's Cook. Escapes. Slides for the first down. Interesting when you take a look, though, at the big picture of the league right now, and, and you give the Calgary Stampeders the respect of the fact that they're the defending champions. So if you're, if you're looking at favorites based on known quantities, known entities, like players that we know and the movement in the offseason, is there a heavy favorite going into this year. You you may pick Winnipeg here for just 
Not many changes, but an add by Willie Jefferson on defense. Huge pickup. Big pickup there. Now people like the BC Lions, obviously, the with Michael Ryan going go there. Trevor Harris and Edmonton but change, changes that team. It's so different because for so many years now, whether people liked it or not, it, it is the truth. It was the Stampeders division to lose. Well, that's right. Right? And, and now it's... You can say the Wild West might be wide open this year. Right? Well, you know, Dave Dickinson is 41 11 and 2 coming which is, into this season. Just crazy. Which is, you know, I mean, yeah. you're talking 13 wins or more for this football team. He's been in the Great Cup three years as the head coach, won it last year. I mean, the, it's this team has been the heavy favorites pretty much every season in recent memory. And Bo being back helps that cause again, although with all the changes on defense, a few on offense, are they still the heavy favorites going in? You give respect to the championship, no question. And, that, and that's one of the things, you're right, is that, you know, you, you sit there and go, ah, maybe this won't be the year. But it always is the year for Calgary. You know, they always seem to find a way, and there's a look at it. I mean, absolutely well, ridiculous run. 15 wins, 14 wins, 15 wins. I mean, they, they own the division. Are they that heavy of favorites again? If you if you base it on history, yes. If you base it on the changes and those known entities at at the players, and the players on defense, I'm not sure they're as heavy favorites as they it's have. It's going to be fun. Back. I think it's going to be fun this yeah. year with these teams in the West. You're right about Winnipeg and bringing in Willie Jefferson is never going to hurt anybody. That kick comes down at the 15 oh, over the top there. Getting down the field for the tackle there. This former Calgary Dino, Calgary kid. Nice. Nick Stats. Stats lead. Hey, give all a line, man. Give all a line. Calgary Stampeders led out of the tunnel earlier this evening by Nick Stats, who's wearing Stampeder red, but played his high school football here in Calgary. But Notre Dame played at the University of Calgary right here at McMahon Field. He's a Calgary guy through and through, and he started the game there. And a nice finish as well as he gets in on the special teams tackle. And we, we saw him just singing along as well, Sue. There he is. Well, that being said, <laughs> everybody loves singing along to that song. Well, well I, and I hope you noticed, rookie, that oh. even down on the field they're singing along. <laughs> so get ready. Me, 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 me. We've got five minutes or so to go, and then I, we're going to hear a Dustin song. Oh, but hey, it's great to see Nick Stats doing that. I mean, Again, making the teams, making the, the team on the special teams. I mean, that's how you're going to do it. A chance to come out. He's familiar with the stadiums. You know, this is home for him. But go out there and make some plays. And Dave Dickinson told me yesterday that this free safety position is wide open competition this year. He's getting some reps. Because they brought in Courtney Steven, but he said it's still wide open. Yeah. And uh, Stats is out there now. And he played actually with his brother with the Dinos. Both of them in the secondary. Might be twins. Well, and in the break, the entire team squad were up there congratulating him on that big special teams tackle hit. And, you know, I, with all due respect to Courtney Stephen, he's a he's a veteran of the Canadian Football yeah. League, so he, he would obviously have the edge, but Dickinson said... Unnecessary roughness. Saskatchewan, number 61. Half the distance to the goal, third down. But, but Dave was telling me that the, the wide side of his secondary wide side corner wide side halfback and then the free safety as well is a competition and they're trying to see who's going to emerge and, and win those starting jobs through the preseason yeah steven six years with the tie cats 12 career interceptions one of the free agent one of the few free agent pickups actually for the stampeders see if stats can beat them all it's going to come from the two and a bad one the ball at the calgary 53, a little bit of hesitation there, and now some room to run again. And another example of the speed for Daniel Braverman, who had a big play earlier in the game. And remember, this, and this is for all the players that are going to play in the preseason this weekend and next. If you don't make the team you're on right now, every other team in the league is watching you, watching your hustle, making blocks on the teams like... Nick Stats just did again, another special team's effort from the young free safety. But Daniel Reverman has shown that speed. And if somehow in the numbers game, he can't make it here in Calgary, other teams are gonna see that he's got some jets. Here's Cook, he'll hand it off once again, jumping around there. 
Gerald Holmes managed to pick up a few yards on the play. Good second effort. Had a touchdown earlier in the game. I would steer away from ballads. Like, I, I don't know if tonight <laughs> in the restaurant you want to sing a ballad. I would. Uh, you know what? I, I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old, so I sing kids' songs so, all the time. So, so. So. I don't. I know there's no real rules, but nursery rhymes are not necessarily. I, I thought I, was Brian Williams saying, "I'm a little teapot," didn't he? Yeah, I mean, that worked. By yeah, the way. but he's that Brian was, Williams, yeah, so you're right. He brought the house down. <laughs> there's Cook, second and eight on the 39, hands it off. It's a nice job there, lunging ahead, close to the first down for. Gerald Holmes again. I want to quickly, while we have time, to uh, congratulate the Toronto Raptors and what they're doing and just captivating the entire country. You know, we're all proud Canadian. And what I love about that team is it's a perfect storm because in the finals for the first time, but their leader in Kawhi Leonard, I love it. He could be a great football player because he's humble. He, he plays with such great humility. Obviously a tremendous athlete, but you have to be humble and a team guy to play football. He's one of the least selfish superstars of superstars I've ever seen in any sport. Yeah, so yeah. congratulations to the Raptors. I mean, it's it's been fun to watch. They're up one game to nothing. We watched the game last night. I thought you made a good point. Um, the Warriors didn't look like they they had any sense of urgency. Yet, yeah, you know? they, they're, they're going to snap yeah. it. It's going to be a tougher game, too. It'll be a good but, series, uh, though. Exciting, yeah. Game two we'll have for you, of course, right here on TSN on Sunday. There's a We the North fan. And Time football count violation. Season. Calgary, number 15. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Football season is here. We the North take it home, Raptors. And football season kicks off in the heels of that. Calgary Stampeders closing in on their first victory of the preseason, leading 27-1. to There's a look at the Dickinson brothers who will meet again regular season July 6th. For more on that matchup, Jermaine Franklin. Thanks, Dustin. Yes, the Dickinsons did say at, after halftime that they didn't notice each other, but Dave did say that it was going to be a little bit different facing his brother as a head coach. And when Craig became the head coach of the Riders, it was a bit of a role re reversal because he's been in the coaching game for so long. It was him that always gave Dave advice, but since Dave has been the head coach for a few years, he's been giving Craig some advice. And one question Craig did say, he's like, how did you find the time to go home at night now that there's so much <laughs> on his plate as a head coach so it's obviously a balance that everybody has to find and one thing that came full circle Dave gave Craig his break when he introduced him to Wally Brown Wano and Craig when he was offered the head coaching job was staying with Dave in Calgary when he got the phone call thank you very much and if you're Dave Dickinson you won two great cuts in the last five years you can leave whenever you want can't you <laughs> or stay as long as you want to <laughs> there's Cook with a completion as that's Braverman again, this time in the passing game. Cool storyline, though. Yeah, very it really, cool. It really is. And, and, you know, this this league has been in our country for over 100 years, and it's never happened before where brothers have been head coaches on opposite sidelines. And it's funny because two head coaches from such a small town, too. It's a great yeah. fault. It's a great fault. Yeah, they, they, you know, and, and 17 seasons for Craig. I mean, he, he's not new to the game of the Canadian Football League. 17 CFL seasons as a coach, but first year as a head coach. Brock Sunderland up in Edmonton from the same yeah, hometown as well, which is that's three pretty impactful jobs in the Canadian Football League. As uh, this one hammered through by Gabe Ferraro. And both of those guys, and talk about humility, both of those guys, by the way, humility is a strength, not a weakness. If you're, if you're a young kid and listening tonight, they're going to try and ignore and push this storyline aside as much as they can throughout the season. I mean, we're going to go into that first matchup July 6th. Saskatchewan and Calgary. It'll be Dave against his brother and it'll be a fun storyline. Maybe get mom and dad involved too. Their parents actually at the graduation of their nephew, Gabe. Yes. Who's graduating high school this week. His sister Callie is there. And Craig has the twin sister, right? Amy, I believe. Amy. It's Amy. Yeah. And then, of course, Sue and, Sue and Bob, Sue Bob are mom and dad. Yeah. yeah. So we're. So big weekend for the family as the two brothers go to battle here. And <laughs> they've got a grandson who's graduating high school. And, and, they, and they made sure. And the reason we were 
<laughs> we were working through our notes there for a second. <laughs> they said, if you're going to name one, name them all, please. Yeah. <laughs> so a shout out to everybody. Yeah. That shout out to the Dickinsons. There's the kick from the 35 as they fall down just inside the 10. Riders trying to get something going here. As they come up to the 30, a big bump there. Pushed out of bounds. It was Mick Roberts on the return. Obviously, he's got the speed. Dickinson talked about his ability to stretch the field, and they've been using him here in the return game in the second half as well. Well, he passes the eye test for sure, too. I mean, look look at his, his stature. I mean, if, if you can be that at 6'3", you know, pushing 200 pounds, and you're known as a stretch receiver, a guy that can get up and get down the field, open things up underneath for other guys and teammates. You know, you got the entire package. Give him a good long look. Two games with the Los Angeles Rams under his belt as well as we see Keenan LaFrance into the game for his first touch. They lost Jordan Williams Lambert, but you know, KD Cannon is going to step up his game in year two. And we mentioned Kyran Moore and the and the uh, uh, training camp that he's had. So this receiving course should be just fine. Ty Ganji now into the game at quarterback for the Riders out of Nevada. Through a touchdown in 27 consecutive games, which is the longest streak in U.S. college football. This one up in the air for grabs, and that'll be an interception. And a lot of room to run. This will be taken back for the pick six in the hands of Anthony Gore. And the Stampeders defense continues to pile on here. We talked about Corey Greenwood is probably the linebacker that will replace Alex Singleton in the middle. This guy, Anthony Gore, is in the battle, and they can do things with the ratio as well. And Dave Dickinson telling me today, Gore is a tackler from tackle to tackle. In other words, a run stopper, very good there. Uh, but you can see he can make a play on the football too. He's got some speed to the end zone. So Anthony Gore's in that discussion. Out of Kennesaw State, six feet tall, 201 pounds. Didn't sign with the team until May 9th, so he's only been around here for a few weeks, but obviously making an impression that Dickinson speaking that highly of him already. Now, that's not on Ty Kanji either. No, that ball was, was tipped at the line of scrimmage and, and up for grabs, but Gore was in the right spot. And that's half the battle. Know your assignment, be in the right spot. Really not on Ty Kanji. Too bad for him that this is how his rep start, but there's a play. That's a check mark in the plus category. Definitely something that will be evaluated in a positive way. Let's see who got the hand on that at the line, but Saskatchewan turned the ball over six times tonight, so they're going to want to clean that up in preseason number two. And the veteran Zach Kalaros comes right over. Hey, that's so right, about that one. Yeah, they were talking about yesterday with Kalaros and how busy he'd be on the sideline, you know, communicating with all the quarterbacks. You've got four guys who are going to be getting part of the game if you want Zach to be in the mix with most of them there. Now Ganji's got to got to get rid of that one. You know, just let that one go. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. That's a play by a D lineman. Didn't get that number, but tipped to the linebacker. Not on the quarterback necessarily, although you want to throw around and find your find your window. Cody Pajardo on your left. The best of the backups for Saskatchewan tonight. Watford on the right there in the battle for that job. The backup Zach Kalaros as well. This ball will be taken at the 12. It's Mick Roberts again. And kind of just leisurely works his way up to about the 31 before he's forced out of bounds. And an opportunity here for Ganji to come in Feel a little bit of confidence before the end of this game. Yeah, you know, I I feel for him on that last play because when I, I've, I've read his bio and I read a little bit about him today and looking at his background, he was a, he was a walk-on first at Colorado. He ended up at Nevada, but he, he seems to be, and there's players across the country that are in the same situation in every position that sometimes politics gets in the way and you're, you're a very good player, but you're on the bench or you're a backup because it's a long-time senior or a coach that goes in a different direction or whatever it may be and it seems to be that Ganji's had that throughout his entire career and, and that means he he is hungry 
You know, that that's the, the player that comes out of that and still gets an opportunity at the pro level is going to be hungry because he wants to just fight off all that politics and say, hey, give me an opportunity and I'll show you what, what I can do. So hopefully he gets some reps. Maybe he's got he's got a minute here, but hopefully he gets some reps in the next game. Definitely show what he could do at Nevada. It was a team MVP in 2017 and 2018. So everything he went through, he definitely became a very important piece. A couple more snaps in here with a minute and 10 seconds remaining. Now, let me ask you this because we talked about Craig Dickinson saying, you know, the winning doesn't matter. It's the preseason. He's right. But knowing Regina and Saskatchewan, 37 to 1 might matter, will it not? Uh, it, it will to some in the media. Okay. It, it won't to Craig Dickinson. Oh, and definitely not to Craig. No, no I, I wasn't And it won't that. to the staff. But, yeah. but there will be some that are going to be real concerned with this. And again, Dave started his starters in the first quarter. Yeah. Being the home team here, and easy enough to do. We've got a flag on the play. There's Georgina on the right. Georgina, Georgina Paul. Paul. Yeah. And Emily Clark, female officials here in this game tonight. We started the game with it. These are the last two plays and a little bit of pushing and shoving and they're not at all worried about getting in between these guys and saying, hey, calm it down or I'm going to have to throw a penalty flag on you. There's Emily Clark and Georgina. And that was the work of Georgina and then you got Emily Clark as well. Again, lots of experience as officials amateur football and at the college level and getting an opportunity to take the next step. Procedure, no end. Saskatchewan, that penalty is declined. It, Unnecessary roughness, Saskatchewan, number 69. 15 yards from the end of the play, second down. That was the center, Braden Schramm, getting the unnecessary roughness. Clark from right here in Alberta, Langdon, Alberta. Dickinson making some notes on the sideline. Obviously, a lot of tape to work through here now. And as a coaching staff, you must love just getting the tape. Like, if this year's team get some film and start working on a few things. Or at least start evaluating a few guys. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and not looking at last year, because last year can be irrelevant in some cases. Angie hands it off this time. And that was LaFrance on the carry. It's college ball in Manitoba. The Saskatchewan Rep Riders, we, we, we showed you, they, they open on the road. They open in Hamilton, and, and then they'll play Ottawa. Week three, they take on Toronto. So three teams against the East kind of find their way. And I'm not, I'm not being disrespectful yeah. to the East Division, certainly not the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Changes in Ottawa, quarterback. Toronto's trying to figure out their quarterback situation. James Franklin, one of them there. But... That's how the Riders will open the regular season. Still have time to get ready for that as they punt from Menard is returned to a 54. Craig Dickinson's first Western opponent as the head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be July 6th. <laughs> <laughs> all, you, all you keep doing is just stoking just, the fire for, for all the Dickinson stories. I'm just bringing it around. <laughs> yeah, they thought being asked about it a few times this week, wait until the regular season comes along. And that week leading up to July 6th, be a busy one. Big smile on the face, Dave, and not so much on the other side from Craig. As the Calgary Stampeders do a victory formation here, and the defending Grey Cup champions. Pretty impressive effort here from everybody involved, and a lot of players dressed tonight for the Stampeders, and they're all going to leave the field here tonight feeling like they're part of a big win. Yeah, absolutely, and and taking a positive step in making the team, and I'd like to extend that to our broadcast booth. Chris Edwards, our producer tonight, will be in the film room right after the game looking at Dustin Nielsen's <laughs> job, or as he just mentioned, the restaurant listening to you sing. But no, nice job tonight. Thanks Excellent. a lot, Suits. Your first yeah. game and CFL and in the booth, the play by play position. And I know you have eight games this year, right? Yeah, regular eight, eight, eight regular season games. So. I think we yeah. probably have one or two together yeah, along for the sure. way. So that's awesome. And good job. And I know my next game will be the preseason game in BC and Cuthbert will be called now.
What do you take away from this one, Glenn? What's the final thought for you on the Stampeders 37-1 win? Well, I think Cody Fajardo took a step as the backup quarterback for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders behind Zach Kolaros. I think Dave Dickens has got to be happy with his quarterback play, but still has to rework that defense in a big, big way. We'll see. The battle for that backup position behind Zach Kolaros. Fajardo 10 of 12, Watford 8 of 12, Parker 5 of 10. So all three of those quarterbacks doing a little bit of something, but not able to get the offense going here at all for the Rough Riders, so that'll be a major focus. And of course, on the other side, the defending Great Cup champions getting a good look at their depth here today as they roll offensively in the defense. Near perfect as well. Stampeders, victory again. Sports Center coming up on TSN.